Hi guys, it's Monday. Here we are, another Maker Monday, Monday Maker. I laid in bed last night and <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I just get caught in a loop every once in a while when I just cannot go to sleep and I was like, is it Monday Maker or Maker Monday? Oh no, are we? Hey Amber, I got a question for you. Where are we? <laughs> We're on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page, right? Because the only reason that I ask, I have not completely lost my mind, but the reason that I ask is because you guys are showing up with the little wave sign. And normally that means that I am stuck on a personal page somehow. We're on the Jesse James Beads Facebook page, right? I know that sounds like a crazy question, but it is a legitimate one. How are we doing? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Patty likes my hair. We're on the Jesse James Speeds Facebook page, right? I um just waiting for somebody to, to give me the thumbs up because it's really, really strange that I'm getting all of the little wave things, right? That's weird. Like every time somebody pops up, there's a little hand next to it that says wave to them. That, that's really the only reason that I ask is because sometimes this iPad has a tendency to put me somewhere. Okay, good. Amber says that we're on the Jesse James Speeds. That's weird. See, Facebook makes all these changes that they don't even bother to tell you about, which is weird. So I appreciate you guys <laughs> not thinking that I have totally lost my mind. I have not. I promise. It's just weird when Facebook does things and they don't um, pass those changes on to you and it makes you kind of second guess everything. So you guys, I don't know if you heard it or not, but there is thunder. There are storms all around me right now. So I'm really, really hoping fingers crossed that we don't lose any connection tonight. Um, I normally don't have any problems with the weather, but you never know, right? It's the same iPad that likes to send me to other places. So never really know what's going to happen. So how was everybody's weekend? I had a good one. I, um, what did I do this weekend? I did a lot of nothing, I think. No, that's not necessarily true. I did some beating on Saturday and yesterday, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yesterday, I, I did do some nothing yesterday and it was nice, it was well-deserved. So, all oh, from Brazil, so good to see you. YouTube does that too. I know, right? I don't know what's up with that. You guys are all commenting on my hair. Thanks. <laughs> I thought I'd be a little fancy today and I just curled it. I don't know. I haven't curled it since, I don't know. I haven't really left the house. I haven't really needed to, but I thought it'd be different today. All right. So I'm excited about today's project, but before we get to it, I want to hit on the um, weekly deals because we're using a mix that is part of the weekly deals as always. So weekly deal number one, and you know there's always one for everybody, so there is something for literally everybody to enjoy. So free bead mixes with a $49 cart, and the code for that is free bead mix. That runs all week. All three of these deals run all week long until next Monday on the 6th at 10 a.m. So you've got a whole week to shop on these. Second is 10% off bead strands and the code for that is 10 strands, which is also a really fabulous deal. Just, just saying. And then last but not least is $10 off of Magical Mystery Bead Box subscriptions and the code for that is mystery. So you guys, you know what that means, right? Normally, those sales tend to coincide with an unboxing. Yes, yes, yes. So we're not gonna unbox tonight. I know some of you will be sad. We're not unboxing tonight, but we are gonna unbox on Thursday morning. It's 11 a.m. Eastern time. So come and hang out with us while we unbox, and then we're gonna make some jewelry using some of the beads that are in here. And you guys, I peaked. I normally don't. I try not to. I try not to look but I had to sit on this all week. You know I couldn't help myself, so I had to open it up and look inside, and oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> um, not August 6th, July 6th. You're getting ahead of yourself. <laughs> all right, you guys. So that's where, not the ma Magic Mystery Bead Box, but the free bead mix um, with your $49 cart, that's where tonight's beads come into play because tonight's beads are Indigo Soul. And I can't wait for you guys to see. These are so stinking pretty. I love blue. Blue beads are just, there's something so calming and just 
I don't know, you know, and they're very ocean feeling. They go very well with all of the mermaid stuff. So we're going to make an anklet tonight. We're going to make an ankle bracelet, which you guys know if you do not like ankle bracelets or you don't wear anything on your ankles um, for whatever reason, you can always turn this into a bracelet. It works exactly the same way. You just want to shorten it just a little bit. So I'm going to show you the beads and then we're going to get down to it. And tonight we are using, thank you, Jane. Tonight we are using the tying station, which you guys know I love the tying station. So it's always a fun one when I get to use the tying station. We're also using some leather and we're using some hemp, which are all good things that I love for summertime. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. I'm excited to show you guys these beads. They're so pretty. Ta-da. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I am absolutely in love with these. I think they're so, so pretty. If you've not had a chance to check these out over on the website, do that while you're checking out the, um, <laughs> Mary, you're crazy, but I will take it. Thank you. Um, check these out while you're shopping on those weekly deals. This is a great little mix. This is a design elements mix. It's a perfect little mix to add to your $49 cart and get it for free. And it has just a little bit of everything in it. It's so stinking pretty. Look at that. I love it. The these are some of my favorites. I really, really love these. I, they never go out of style, right? You, they just, you can't get enough sparkle. We're gonna use the little butterflies that are in here as some dangles. I've already added some six millimeter jump rings to these. They don't come with the jump rings, but I didn't take them off because I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm just being just being real with you. Just being completely honest. I um I did not take those off. This guy, I left the jump ring on him as well. Um we're going to use him as like the centerpiece, but there are two of these. So if you're not going to use them for this, you could make really beautiful earrings out of these. The facet on this and the way that it's drilled right in the front, I love, love, love. So it's going to hang really, really beautifully on our ankle bracelet. I'm going to be honest with you. I had a really hard time picking out beads for this because you literally could use any of the beads in this little mix to make this ankle bracelet. Like I'm going to use these little four millimeter beads. They have a little bit of a larger hole. It's not a huge hole by any means, but it's big enough to um, thread onto some hemp, which is what we're going to do. Well, I, it was like a toss up because I have these, but then there are also the little galaxy beads that also will thread onto the hemp. And then there were these faceted guys. Like it was so tough trying to figure out which beads I wanted to use because I wanted to use them all, right? <laughs> I just couldn't decide. So there are also some really gorgeous bohos in here. These scream earrings to me. I absolutely need to make earrings out of those. And then I think... I think my second favorite next to these little guys are these. Look how pretty, so, so pretty. They are, they just have like that whisper of blue through them. They're just absolutely gorgeous. I love the way that they're cut. That shape is really, really beautiful. Again, that would have made a perfect centerpiece for our ankle bracelet, but um, I, it was hard. It was hard to choose. And then of course there are these guys, which I talk about all the time that have that they're just so soft you just want to pet them <laughs> how weird is that i just want to pet the beads right is <laughs> they feel like they feel like velvet almost they're just so good so this mix is absolutely stunning right i mean there's no way around it this is gorgeous so we are going to set this to the side i'm going to pop these little guys back in there with my little bit of hardware this bracelet's not going to take or ankle bracelet whichever it's not going to take a whole lot of hardware to create which is another thing that i absolutely love all right let me pull you up a little bit there we go all right so for those of you who don't who are maybe you're new maybe you don't know a whole lot about the tying station i'm going to explain it to you so the tying station is this really handy tool one of my favorites that is it's made out of acrylic and it has a handy ruler on the side for you and it is open here underneath so you can get your fingers underneath the things that you're working on and it is really great for creating grown-up friendship bracelets uh, wrap bracelets anything else that 
you need to secure both ends, right? So this kind of works in place of the old fashioned clipboard that we used to use when we made hemp jewelry or safety pinning it to yourself, right? You could safety pin it to your knee or to your sock or whatever. This takes the place of that, right? Super easy to use. I'm gonna show you just how easy. So we're gonna start out with, you need about two feet of leather cord. I'm using some black. I really would have preferred to use brown with this, but black is what I had. I just don't have a whole lot of brown right now. I use it up so, so quickly, so I need to kind of restock. But if you are interested in some of this black leather cord, you can grab some of this over on the Jesse James Speeds website. So I definitely use something that is you attainable, right? You can get this. Also to be noted that if you check out all the cord that's over on the website, there are a lot of different ones to choose from. So um, you don't just have to go with the black. There's a really beautiful brick red color. There are some really nice um, gold colors and just a lot of different cords and leather that you can choose from from the website. So we're gonna take two feet of the leather and we're just gonna fold it in half and where we folded it in half, we are going to create just a little overhanded knot, right? We just wanna create a little loop. It doesn't have to be a big loop. And just kind of pull on your leather to get it nice and secure, okay? Now, we're gonna come up here to the top of the tying station. We're gonna take the wing nut off and we are going to remove the washer. Don't lose your washer, okay? <laughs> please don't, please don't. This is probably the most important part of the entire tool. Don't lose the washer. I'll tell you why in just a second. Now, you wanna lift up this acrylic plate. Make sure that you are up here on the top where it starts in with, you know, where you're counting one up. If you start at the 10 and work your way up, you get really confused, so, or at least I do. Okay, so we're gonna take our loop and we're gonna hook it over the peg that is here, and then we're gonna take the acrylic plate, we're gonna place that right back over it. Now, why is that little washer so important? It's super important because if you screw down the wing nut without that washer and you tighten it down too much, you're gonna crack the acrylic plate. So it's really, really important that you don't lose the washer. Um, luckily, the washers are easy to replace, but definitely don't try to do this without one. You will regret it, I promise Yeah, I promise. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, guys. How is everybody? So glad to see everybody here. Okay, so now we're going to come down here to the other side. And the other end of our um, tying station is exactly like the top. However, when we take the wing nut off, actually, I'm not going to take mine all the way off. I just need to lift it up so that I can get, see how I can get in between the acrylic plates here. The only difference on the bottom is that you can adjust it this direction, right? So if you don't need the entire length of this, you can definitely slide this around um, and then screw it down wherever you need it to be. Okay, so I'm going to take the two ends of my cord and I'm just going to slide them underneath between the two acrylic plates and then screw back down with the wing nut. So I don't have to take this one completely off just to um, secure the bottom here. And you do want to be sure that it's nice and tight. You don't want it to be, you know, super, super tight where it's, you know, you can play a song on it or anything like that. But you want to be sure that there is some tension here, okay? And as you go, because the leather is nice and smooth, it will probably loosen up on you a little bit and you will have to come down here and tighten it back up again. Totally fine. That's just kind of the way that it goes with the tying station, particularly when you're using slippery things like um, leather. Okay, so. What else are you gonna need? You're gonna need about four feet of hemp. And let me just show you. Available on the Jesse James Speeds website is a card that has four different colors of the hemp, which I love that it comes in different colors. So there's the black, there's like this kind of gray color, there is a khaki color, it's kind of on the green side, and then just your standard color of hemp here. It is 10 pound hemp. So this is this is pretty much an average. Um, <laughs> Sylvia, <laughs> well you know what I mean, you don't play a song on it, you know? You know? Okay, anyway, <laughs> you, um, you're gonna get pretty much the most common size as far as hemp goes with the 10 pounds. Hemp is measured in pounds, which is kind of funny, but it is instead of um, you know the diameter of it. 
and 10 is the most common. Okay, so you're gonna need about four feet of this. It doesn't take a whole lot of this to use. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take the end of our hemp and we just wanna tie it to this. We don't necessarily want to do any kind of fancy knot or anything like that. You can if you want to, but more than anything, I just want to get this secured to the leather cord. And so I'm just going to tie a little overhanded knot. All right, just like that. And I'm actually only gonna tie it once, okay? I'm not even gonna double tie that. I may come back at the end and double tie this. We are gonna use a little bit of glue today. Um, and I'm using GS Hypo Cement for this. Um, it just seems to work really well, but you can use super glue too if you want to. So all I care about at the moment is just tying this on here. Got a short little tail, I'm gonna ignore that, and then we have our working thread. So we've got almost a full four, four, <laughs> full four feet. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Full, four, that's, that's a mouthful. We've got four feet of cord, you guys, or hemp, rather. Okay, so now we're going to do a knot that we actually just recently did. Let me see if I see the earrings. I do. All right, so if you guys will remember, a couple weeks ago, wasn't too long ago, we took some hemp and we created the little tushy knots. Some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about. The little knots here, it looks like a little tushy with a belt, okay? That's just the way we decided to describe it. That was one of those things where we knew we'd never forget it. So we're making a, what these really are, are lark's head knots, but we're doing it with just one single piece instead of two. You know how a lark's head knot, you make a loop and then you pull the ends through. So we're, we're only working with one strand to, <laughs> to create this knot. So we did it around a component. Now we're gonna do it down a piece of leather and we're actually gonna add some beads to this as we go, okay? So it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna end up looking really, really pretty. And I love this knot because this one seems to be easy for most everybody. Um, once you get the hang of this one, it, it makes a square knot seem so much easier to do, okay? Because you're only doing this on one side, whereas a square knot happens on both sides, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through it nice and slow. So our cord, the long part of our cord is coming out over here on the right, okay? And we're out of focus for a second. Hold on now, come on, focus, focus, focus. That didn't me any good if you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hemp and we're gonna create a little P shape and we're going across the surface of our two strands of leather, okay? So that it's going across. I'm gonna take my finger underneath there just to kind of help right to lift this up a little bit now i'm going to take the tail end of the hemp and i'm going behind the two pieces of leather and then up through the knot or the loop rather that p shape that we made and then i just want to pull and when i pull i'm going to slide okay so i'm sliding that knot into place now this knot happens in two steps just like a square knot so that was the first now we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna start underneath. So we're making the P shape with our hemp, but it's underneath the two leather cords. Now this time we're gonna take the tail and we're gonna go down through the P shape that we made, and then we're gonna pull. And what you've created is a lark's head knot with a single strand, and that's it. That's all there is to it, right? That's what the finished knot looks like. Ignore this one, that's just where we attached it to our leather. But this one right here, you can see the two little legs or the little tushy and then the belt going across to hold its pants up, right? That's how, <laughs> that's how we described it. And that, I feel like it worked because everybody was like, oh yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it, I got it. All right, so that's one. So each step, one, two, makes one knot. Okay, now we're gonna do that again. We're just gonna repeat. We're gonna take the hemp, make the P shape over the top of the leather cord. Then we're gonna take the tail end of our leather and we're gonna bring it behind, or our, our hemp, not the leather. We're gonna take it behind 
the leather cord and up through the P-shape, okay? And then we're gonna pull, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're going behind. So behind with your little P-shape, okay? And now we're taking it over the top and down through. Now, what you may notice, you can see where mine just came a little bit loose. That's one of the things about creating this knot over some leather, is that occasionally as you're working on the second step of your knot, it will get a little loose on you. All you have to do is just kind of give it a little tug and it will tighten back up and use both of your fingers or both of your hands rather to pull your knots up. Now, something else to notice, I want you to look and see the placement of the knots. You can slide these together really, really tight if you want to. I'm not a fan of the super tight look. I kind of like to have that leather cord kind of peeking through. So that's just a personal choice. I just really, you know, I, I like the, um, the difference between the hemp and the leather and having those two, you know, very obvious. When we add beads, you're definitely gonna see some of the leather, so there's really no way to avoid it. Um, so, oh, that's okay, Suzanne. Yeah, definitely come back and watch the replay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we'll miss you though. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> It's up to you if you wanna squeeze these together really, really tight, but I, I just kinda of like to have that, that leather running through there and being able to see it. It's just another part of the design. All right, so that was two. We're gonna do four more. Let's see, are we gonna do four? No, we're gonna do five more. I want seven at the top and seven at the bottom. So we're gonna do seven of these before we add any beads. So we're gonna do five more, which gives us plenty of time to practice before we add anything different. Tina, this is the tying station. It is created by Beadalon and you can grab them on the Jesse James Speeds website. Super handy tool. It is relatively inexpensive and I cannot live without mine. I love it, love, love, love it. If somebody could drop a link, that'd be awesome. All right, so we're gonna start with that P shape again, going across the top of the leather, okay? And then take our hemp behind the leather and up through the P shape that we created and then we're gonna pull, okay, that's step one. Step two, we're going behind to create our little P shape, and then we're taking the tail over the top and down through. I try not to get my fingers in the way. I have to remember to do this nice and slow because I want you guys to see it, but when I get really kind of in the groove with this, my fingers are all over the place and, um, <laughs> You just can't see anything. So yell at me if my fingers are in the way, guys. All right, so we've done three. One, two, three. And remember how to count if you walk away from it. If you've got a full belt, right, that's one whole knot. And that's how you count the knots. One, two, three. So we've got three of the belts going down. Okay. All right. We're going to do another one. This one was over the top. Pull. Under the back and pull. Okay, pull that nice and tight. And now we're gonna do another one. P shape over the top, under and up through. Keep hitting the, <laughs> not ringing the bell, but I'm hitting the, hitting the bowl today. We're going behind and down through and pull. Okay, count one, two, three, four, five. We've got two more to go. Then we're gonna add some beads to this. Okay, over the top, back underneath or behind rather, and then up through and then behind and down through. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more. And then we're gonna add some beads to this. I'll show you how fun that is. I love to add beads to this, this kind of knot. It's just really, um, it's made for adding beads to it. All right, and then pull. 
Okay, so I do want to give everything a nice little tug, make sure everything is nice and tight. I like to make sure that everything is evenly spaced. So we'll kind of just adjust a little bit, take a look at it and make sure that I'm happy with the way things are going. Looks pretty good to me, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna add a bead to this. And there are several different places in this kind of design where you can add a bead. Normally when we are using the tying station and we're doing knots, I like to add the beads to the core. And the core is, is what we are knotting onto. And then you just kind of slide those beads up. So you can kind of preload your strands of the core and slide your bead up and you don't have to like continuously take this um, off of the tool, which makes it super, super convenient. But when we're doing this way and we're gonna add the, um, the beads to the hemp instead of the core, there's no way to preload. So you do have to take an extra, you know, minute or two just to kind of add the um the beads to your hemp and you have to do it one at a time but it doesn't take that much extra time really okay so just keep that in mind if you want your beads to be here and then not around them you can do that or we're going to add ours to the actual hemp that we're using to create the knots so the first bead that i want to add from our mix are i really love these this is actually the bead that inspired this entire design it is just this really beautiful acrylic navy blue bead and as simple as that may be it just immediately grabbed me and I knew I needed to do something with the hemp with this just that kind of bead you know and there are several of these in the mix so you've got plenty of these to work with they have a nice size hole we're just going to slide that onto the end of our hemp and we're going to bring it down to the surface of our leather. Now it's gonna sit to the side. It's not gonna sit on top because our cord is coming out to the side. So all of the beads that we add to this are actually gonna be, when you put this on as an ankle bracelet, they're gonna be dangles, right? We're gonna add some charms, a little bit of extra fun with this, but um, even still just your beads kind of have a dangle feature to them, if you will, right? Okay, so <laughs> Wanda, I know, isn't it pretty? So Wanda, Wanda's just joining us, and there are probably some others of you that are just joining us as well. We're creating an ankle bracelet using the tying station, and we're using the Indigo Soul Design Elements Mix from Jesse James Beads, and it is a stunner. It's a stunner, I'm telling you. Okay, so now how do we how do we do this with a um, a bead, well, we just treat it the exact same way, except that we are gonna have some spacing here. There will not be any hemp on the leather where the bead is, so there's gonna be a big gap here. But I like that, I'm just, I'm a fan, so. All right, so same thing. We're just gonna take our hemp, we're creating that P shape. We're just kind of pretending like that bead is not there. Okay, and then we are going behind the two leather cords and up through the P shape that we made, and then when we pull, we want to kind of set our bead in its spot, okay? And I don't want to pull too tight. I want it to be nice and snug so that it is not moving around this direction, but I don't want to pull it so tight that it, it bows the leather cord, okay? All right, second, we're going underneath with our little P-shape and then down through. And this is going to secure that bead into place. Okay, it is pouring down rain. <laughs> the bottom just opened up out of the sky. That's crazy. I haven't had much thunder, but it is absolutely pouring down rain. All right, so that's how we're gonna attach the beads. Now, we're gonna do a combination of these long kind of cylinder shaped beads and we're gonna use, remember these little guys we talked about at the beginning? We're gonna use these and our little butterflies that were also in this mix. So the next time we go to add beads, this is what we're gonna add, okay? So I just wanna go ahead and sit those to the side. And I want three knots in between each one of my bead sections. So I've already got one, so we're just gonna do two more, okay? So same thing, our P shape over the top, behind and up through, and then pull. Okay, Sex, second step <laughs> is behind, okay, and then down through. And then we're gonna pull, and that's gonna make knot number two. 
and then we're going to do number three over the top behind and up through someone downstairs is cooking something and it smells amazing i'm starving it smells so good <laughs> i wish i had smell a vision so you guys could smell it smells really good can't decide what it is <laughs> and then down through all right there are our three knots you guys know it's not me cooking it would be cereal all right now we're ready to add another little section of beads to this now remember we're making an, an ankle bracelet out of this so this is going to be longer than an average bracelet right what we're going to go for as far as our length is going to be about an eight and a half inch ankle bracelet which you can adjust um, whether you need it to be shorter or longer you can do less beads for this um, or you can make some adjustments that I will show you when we get to the end okay but um, just keep that in mind as we go because we are going to use pretty much the entire work surface here on the tying station okay so now we're ready to add some more beads I'm going to thread on one of these beautiful little blue beads. I'm going to thread on the six millimeter jump ring that I attached to our butterfly and then another one of the beautiful blue beads. We're just going to treat this like a single bead like we did with this guy and <clears throat> make sure that we drop those beads down and then just carry on with our knots. Just create the P shape. Now this time I do need to slide those beads into place. Make sure that they're right there where I want them to be. And you can see I'm kind of holding them in place with my fingers as I'm creating the second step of the knot, just because I don't want them to slide around so much. Because it's more than one bead, they do have a tendency to travel on me, so I do like to hold those in place, at least until I get them. <laughs> That's so true, so true at least until I get that knot in place, okay? Now we're gonna do two more knots because we want three total in between each one of our bead sections, okay? And I'm just gonna kinda go through these a little bit quicker. Okay, there's two. <laughs> and Now we're doing number three, and then I'm gonna scroll up because I saw something go by, and I'm gonna, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I knew it, Amber. Amber says, looks so easy, but I am sure I can mess it up. Nope, 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 not at all. Amber, I know you can do this. You absolutely can do this. Just watch this on replay a couple of times. I'm telling you, this is one you're not gonna mess this up. You're gonna do great with it, I promise. I promise, I promise. This one is super, super easy. So we'll slide a bead on and then I'll walk you through it again, okay? So this time I'm gonna use another one of those kind of long cylinder shaped beads. Bring that down, okay? All right. So the knot happens in two steps, okay? You can do this. We're taking the hemp, creating a P shape over the top of the two leather cords, okay? And then we're gonna take the tail end of the hemp, we're going back behind, and then I'm just gonna pull that tail up through the P shape that we created, that's step one. And we wanna slide that bead into place, okay? That was step one, step two, is behind, oh Sarah, you're killing me. Carne asada sounds amazing. We're going behind with our little P shape, okay? Same thing, but this time we're going behind the two pieces of leather, and now this time we're taking the tail end down through the P shape. So the knot happens in two steps, one over the top and one behind the, that didn't make any sense, I'm sorry. One over and one under as far as the P shape that we're, we're talking about, okay? So that was one when we secured our bead. Now let's do it again. <laughs> I know everybody's making me hungry too. <laughs> All right, we're making a P shape over the top of the two leather cords in the middle, taking the hemp behind the two leather cords and pulling it up through the P shape that we made. And then we're gonna pull, that's step one. Okay, step two, same thing, but this time we're going behind. 
So the P-shape goes behind the two leather cords and then down through that P-shape that we made and then pull, okay? I have faith in you. I know you can do this one. I know you can. And not only do I know that you can do this one, but you're gonna make amazing things with it. You guys just do that. It's like, I'm inspired by you guys every single day. It's amazing. If you're not part of our secret stash group over on the Jesse James Speeds Facebook page, it is a group that is hosted by Jesse James Speeds. It is such a wonderful community of the most amazing, I did start it, Jane, you're right. <laughs> the most amazing people that are there to inspire you and help you. And it's just a wonderful community. We have such a good time together. So come and join us if you're not a part of it yet. All right, we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna add some more beads. So we're going across the top of our two leather cords, back behind them and then up through. And we're gonna pull, okay? This time we're going back behind with our little P-shape and then we're taking that tail down through and pull, okay? So there are our three knots and now we are ready to add some more beads. Valerie, you can grab this tying station over on the Jesse James Beads website. All right, so now we're going to add another one of our little blue beads. Okay, and then our little butterfly with the jump ring already attached to it. And then another one of the little blue beads. My, my hemp is starting to get a little frayed at the end. When it starts to get frayed, you can just kind of twist it and hopefully that will, um, you know, make it tight enough to get back through the bead. But if not, you can always just kind of trim some of it off. All right, bringing those beads down. Okay, and we're just gonna treat them exactly like we would if it were a single bead. Uh-oh, what's wrong with the hemp? It's got a little, a little, a little bump in it. Okay, so same thing. We're just gonna treat it just like we would if it didn't have the, um, Lindsay says she's only been doing jewelry for a year. Well, welcome to the world of jewelry. You come join the Secret Sash group. You are going to love it, love it. There are people who've been making jewelry just as long as you and then people that have been doing it for a million bazillion years and there is so much help and inspiration. You'll love it. You absolutely will love it. Come hang out with us. All right, so just like we would if it didn't have beads on it. So we're going, creating that P-shape, going across the two strands of the core, which is the two leather, back behind, and then up through. And I gotta tell you, hemp jewelry and knotting is a really good place to start. If you've never, um, or if this is like, you know, you've never made like friendship bracelets before, Doing knotting is really fun and the tying station really makes it super easy. Okay, so back behind for the second step and then down through and then pull. And for those of you who may be new to Jesse James Beads, not only do we have the secret stash group, I'm gonna go ahead and do two more knots as I'm chatting. Um, not only do we have the secret stash group, but all of the projects that you see and we do two projects a week we do maker mondays or monday maker or whichever one you want to call it happens at 7 p.m eastern time that's how you ended up here tonight um, but then we also do thursday mornings at 11 a.m eastern um, all of the projects that we do get moved over to the jesse james beads um, youtube channel so definitely subscribe to the youtube channel you can go and you can check out the full library of all of the projects that we've got there. And there are a ton. So if you ever feel like you need some inspiration or you just need a refresher on some of the techniques that you've seen that we do in the, in the stash group, definitely come and hang out at the YouTube channel. And there's, there's like tons of inspiration there. I'm talking like tons. Okay, so there are our three knots. We're ready to add another bead now. I'm gonna add another one. Oh my gosh, you guys, you know what? I put the wrong bead here. Ah, oh, that's okay. I'm not, because he's on a jump ring, now this is a good lesson. 
because it's on a jump ring it means that I don't have to undo all of these knots to change this out I actually wanted to put this guy because that's going to be actually the center um, so I'm just going to very very carefully come in with my pliers and open that jump ring and I'm going to take the butterfly off and instead of trying to pop this guy on I'm just gonna put the second one let me open that up just a bit more glad I caught that okay that's why it's always a good idea to put like your charms on jump rings because otherwise, otherwise I would have had to undo all those knots, which there's only three and it would have been okay. You know, it wouldn't have taken me forever, but could you imagine if I had done like 50 knots and then I needed to undo it? I would have just kind of just, I, I probably would have just tossed it <laughs> and started over again. I don't know. Sometimes I get frustrated like that. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Now, so that's not gonna be our little butterfly. This is the center and it has that beautiful um, faceted bead as the center. So our butterfly will come back into play here in just a minute. But this time we're gonna add another one of these fun little navy blue beads that I, I don't know what it is about this bead that I love so much, but I just really, really do. So again, I'm doing the P shape, right, over the top back behind and then up through and then I'm going to pull that was the first step the second step is back behind and then down through and pull I see you ginger how are you ginger I haven't talked to you in a while I hope you're doing okay miss your face <laughs> I know ginger in real life guys I'm not I'm not creepy I promise <laughs> I don't know though I might be nah all right so we've got one we want to do two more okay and I'm just gonna kind of zip through these pretty quickly so we're getting close to the end here and one thing that I will mention about the tying station that it's not a deal breaker by any means, um, but it does tend to get a little crowded when you get down here to the bottom of the tying station, just because you're, you have less workspace. Whereas we started out, we had like all this extra room to work with, and now we're getting down here to the end. And it does feel a little cramped when you are coming down to the end of your project. Um, but it's not, it's not too uncomfortable. It's, you know, obviously I still, still love it and use it, but then it is just, you know, something to take into consideration that when you do get down to the bottom, you know, you're running out of room. Like this is, this is the area we're working in. So, okay. Now I need to get another jump ring. Oh, well, I've got one in my hand, but I feel like It'll be one short when we get to the end but that's okay so I'm gonna open up another jump ring here and add our little butterfly to it because I took it off of the other okay so now we're gonna add our last little set of beads we're doing another one of the little blue you can see my hemp is really getting frayed at the end I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off So another thing you can do with your hemp if, um, and it really, it works with a lot of different cords, particularly if you're working with nylon cording, um, like the s lons or the B-Lon, if you will take the very end of it and stick it into your super glue, like down in the, the top of your super glue and let it dry, it makes, it will harden up and it will make the end of your hemp like a needle, which is really cool. Yes, Leah, you absolutely can use a macrame board for this. Absolutely. Okay, there's the last little butterfly and our little blue bead here. Okay, I'm gonna drop those down. And because this is our last little grouping of beads, instead of just finishing off with three, we started way up here at the top. Remember we had seven of those knots. I wanna do seven more. So the first one is this one where we're capturing our beads and our little butterfly. 
So that was the first step. And <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> I, I must have some extra patience today. <laughs> So Tina says macrame board question mark. I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to just keep doing the knots and I'll answer her question there. So yeah, macrame boards are I've got one. I can't reach it or I'd show it to you. Um it's just self-healing foam and um you do you use it the same way you use the tying station, um but you use T-pins to hold your um, cord, your hemp, or whatever it is that you're using, um, and you just kind of pin it to the board. And because it's self-healing, then of course when you take the pins out, it's nice and looks like new again, you know? It's, it's really, that's what happened before the tying station. Like we went from clipboards to, um, macrame boards and then the next step up from the macrame boards are or is the tying station um, a lot of the macrame boards the original ones did not have rulers on them you know they weren't marked now most of the macrame boards that you can get are gridded the, and so they have a nice ruler and a grid and that whole bit but <clears throat> The difference is, is that the tying station gives you the opportunity to get underneath. See how I can get underneath here? And I can actually flip this over and get to the back of the piece if I want to. And a macrame board, you don't have that option, right? You, you can't, if everything is pinned down, you really can't get to the back or the underneath of anything unless you pin it up off of the board. So there are pros and cons to both. Um, it's really just personal preference, but I'm a huge fan of the tying station. It's just so convenient. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room, whereas the macrame board is, that I have at least is huge, you know, and trying to find a place to store it is, you know, sometimes that makes it less, I'm, I'm less likely to grab for something if I have to put it up on a really high shelf, you know, to get it out of the way. And that just kind of happens to be the situation now okay so we have one two three four five we need two more knots and then we are going to sherry says you could use the naughty do it all i love don't tell everybody at beetle on that i said that <laughs> don't tell on me um but yeah i love the naughty do it all i've got the big one is one of my most favorite things in the whole world to play with i adore it um, but it's pricey. And so I normally don't, um, like over on Sarah Ellis designs, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't show it because it is so expensive. I, I just can't, I can't feel good about endorsing something that is so costly. Like I love it and it was worth it, but not everybody can, you know, can splurge on it and it's not, you can get, quite a lot of the same things accomplished using the tying station if i'm just being completely honest with you it's it's a splurge not a need you know but it's a great tool it's just an expensive one that's for sure it's a treat <laughs> all right so we have finished we've got all of our i'm turning it to the side so you can kind of get an idea of how this is going to look when you wear it so you see how all of the beads are hanging on the bottom and your little dangles here that are absolutely gorgeous this is like so beachy love 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 it okay so before i take it off of the tying station and we finish this up i'm going to just tie just a regular old knot here to tie my cord off, my hemp rather, which that was the funniest little, okay, let's take it off. <laughs> let's take it off of the tying station because I can't even explain what kind of weird little knot that was. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know guys, I don't know what that was. I was just kind of improvising and I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let's take this off of the tying station and then we will we'll figure it out. All right, so I'm just letting the bottom go. I'm gonna come up here to the top. I do have to take this part all the way up. 
See, Joan, I feel like some people are like that, like they've got one, but they've never used it. And it was an expense, you know, whereas I feel like the tying station, like if you crack the tying station, you can very quickly replace it and you don't have to save up for it. I love that, right? <laughs> And I have, I, I only have one Naughty Do It All, but I have three tying stations. So, you know, just saying, just saying. <laughs> That's the Sarah endorsement on the uh, tying station. It's a good one, I'm telling you. Okay, so up here, when we very first got started, I had just kind of tied a funny little overhanded knot. Um, I'm gonna leave that knot just like it is and I'm gonna come in, I really wish that it were on the other side. So I actually am not going to do that. I'm gonna take that knot out, I'm just using my pliers here just to undo that knot. Remember, it was just an overhanded knot. It wasn't anything super spectacular. And I'm gonna do the best that I can <laughs> to tie the knot over here on the back, which, doesn't mean a whole lot, but <laughs> I just want the tied part of that to be on the back side of the leather because I am going to add a little bit of glue to it. And I just, I feel like the, the glue is better to be on the back than on the front. And that still, oh, that was fine. I don't know what I was thinking. Honestly, the front and the back look so similar. <laughs> I flipped it over and I'm like, isn't that the front? Thank you, Tina. Okay, so I just moved that over here to the back. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of my Hypo Cement and I am going to, I love the Hypo Cement because it has that tiny, tiny little precision tip so I can really get in there. Um, super glue works just as well. I definitely recommend one that has the little tiny precision tip on it though so you can really get in to the little crevices where you have tied that knot in your hemp. So I'm gonna let that dry. It's not gonna dry completely before I trim it off, but um, uh, any video you are going to do, any, <laughs> Rita, Rita's asking about my bracelet. Hold on. So no, I'm not gonna do one. I don't normally do videos on um, projects like this because that's not my original design. It was somebody else's tutorial. Well, not their tutorial, but a pattern. Now, I don't like to use other other designers' patterns for video projects. So people can be, you know, I don't wanna, I don't want them to think that I'm stealing their, their work by any means. Okay, so coming back around here, just wanna tie a knot into this one. Um, Rita, I can give you a link though afterwards if you want to know where I got this uh, project from where I got the, the pattern for it. All right, so same thing. I'm just tying a knot down here with my hemp on the other end, okay? And I am pulling that knot pretty tight. And again, I'm just gonna add some more of the Hypo Cement. So the Hypo Cement takes about 24 hours to completely set up. We don't have that kind of time. Um, I am going to let it sit for just a second before I trim but um, you can go ahead and trim it off if you want to. Just, I wouldn't wear it for at least 24 hours. At least let it sit overnight, right, before you um, wear it, just to let that glue really kind of set up. Okay, so on one side we have a loop here, and down here on the other end we have two ends of our leather cord. Now, there are a couple of different things that you can do here if you want. If you want to add a button to this, you just tie the button on and use the button for your, um, you know, to go through your loop. Or you can tie knots. I'm gonna tie two knots and I'll show you. You can use the knot, glue on my hands. You can use the knot itself as the catch. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, on your loop, but sometimes it it just kind of just kind of depends on your leather. Sometimes the knot that you create is not quite big enough, right, to catch. So it'll do okay for a little while, but too much moving around and it might slip. 
So the remedy to that would be, of course, to have made a smaller loop, right? And that would catch. But since I am, I have this extra and I'm, I'm not a huge, huge fan, I'm gonna tie a second knot down from the first knot that I tied just a tiny, tiny bit. And you may need to use your pliers to get in there if your, if your ends are short. But what I'm leaving is just a little space between these two knots where you can either, um, whoops, add your jump ring or you can add your clasp or I'll show you, okay? Because it can be either or on the ends is, is pretty much what I'm getting at. Okay, so I have two knots here and there's a space, I'll put my pliers in there so you can see. So there's a loop, there's an opening here. It's a really good place, I'm gonna trim that off. It's a really good place to either attach your clasp or to attach your jump ring. And it makes no difference which one goes where, but since I've already got a loop here, I'm just going to take this jump ring off of this bead since we didn't use it. And I'm gonna attach my clasp to this little loop and then I'm just gonna use my clasp or the, the other end instead of using another jump ring. I'm sorry, I know, I'm, it, I, I think I'm being very confusing. So there's the clasp attached here and then just use that right just like that instead of another jump ring you could put another jump ring here if you wanted to but there's a loop here so you may as well use it right or you can do it the other way and you can take your jump ring and your clasp and put it on this end and hook to this end and if you don't want to hook to this end um add a jump ring right the hardware part is really i mean you know it's really just kind of an extra afterthought unless you want to put a really decorative clasp on here or a decorative button i like buttons a lot um, but if i'm going to be wearing outside my anklet outside sometimes the button is one of those that um, i trust on a bracelet but not necessarily on an ankle bracelet um, just because i tend to you know i tend to be playing if I'm outside, you know, kicking the ball around or whatever I'm doing with the kids and the button sometimes can slip out. So when it comes to ankle bracelets, I do like to use some sort of hardware, um, but that's just personal preference, totally up to you. You can do whatever you need to do. And if you've made this into a bracelet instead, definitely use a button. Buttons are fun. I love buttons. And just so you know, there's a whole world of dress it up buttons <laughs> that make great clasps, right? If you're looking for a button, dress it up buttons just happens to have a more than a couple. <laughs> All right, so here is our ankle bracelet. I think it turned out really, really well. It would look really beautiful even with um, a lighter colored leather. I do like the black though. It wasn't my original choice, but I feel like it looks very nautical with the black and the hemp and the navy blue, right? It just, I don't know, it has that kind of nautical look to it. But you could substitute the core cords with anything else that you wanted to. You could use cotton cord in here you could use brown leather you could use leather in a beautiful color um, and there just so happens to be some of that to choose from over on the Jesse James Speeds website so take advantage if you're going over to check out the weekly deals check out the cord and the leather and everything else that is that is available there all right guys I'm gonna turn you around here and we will part ways for our evening Whew. so not I agree I agree wow you guys are really low <laughs> make a little adjustment there all right guys so that is it for us today it was a great project I hope you guys enjoyed it it's always fun I love knots I love hemp and leather that's just like summer staples for me so it's always a pleasure to get to show you guys a fun project using those things um, I hope that you guys learned how to do the knot and you go and create something wonderful with it using your Jesse James beads definitely show them off if you are a member of secret stash post your pictures on secret stash and let us see what it is that you are creating because it is inspiring to all of us to see what everybody else has got going on all right guys 
have a wonderful wonderful rest of the evening it is time for me to go eat something and then the couch is calling my name but i will see you guys again on thursday morning 11 a.m here eastern time and we're going to be unboxing the magical mystery bead box and creating something fun with it i think i already know what it's going to be but you'll just have to wait and find out so come hang out with us on thursday you can also catch me on wednesdays at 1 p.m on dress it up buttons for a crafty fun project using dress it up buttons which just happens to be jesse james beads sister company both companies are um they're not one in the same but you know they live in the same they live in the same little area, right? <laughs> same family. So, all right. Have a wonderful night, you guys. And I will see you guys again soon, okay? Bye, guys.